हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज प्रोफेसर विवि उत्तरवार फ्रॉम के के वाक कॉलेज ऑफ फूड टेक्नोलॉजी नाशिक सो टुडे आई एम हियर विथ न्यू वीडियो दैट इज ऑन बार्ली प्रोसेसिंग सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू सी द व्हाट इज द मिलिंग एंड माल्टिंग प्रोसेस ऑफ बार्ली ओके सो द बार्ली इज वर्ल्ड्स फोर्थ मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट सीरियल क्रॉप आफ्टर व्हीट मेज एंड राइस सो बार्ली इज मेनली यूज्ड इन इंडियन डाइट एज ए ह्यूमन फूड Uh, barley flour is mixed with wheat or germ flour for making chapatis when mixed with the wheat oat or rye flour barley is used in bread making also uh, also barley malt is majorly produced in various regions another important use of barley is in the processing of beer or manufacturing of beer and for distilling in manufacturing of whiskey so this is a So, uh, a small introduction about barley so in this video or in this powerpoint presentation we are going to see the contents of this powerpoint are structure of barley grain then the what is the chemical composition of barley grain then uh, what is milling process of barley and after that what is malting process of barley so majorly uh, we are going to take more portion about malting process of barley as majorly barley malt is prepared in india and in worldwide also okay starting with structure of barley so the scientific name of barley it is a hordium vulgar okay as you can see in picture there are two pictures are there first one that is a dehulled uh, sorry it is a barley grain uh, with husk and in second it is a dehulled barley is shown in the picture that is of white color also called as pearl barley okay so this is a pictorial presentation of barley grain it is same as like wheat but there are slight changes in wheat and barley grains majorly whatever the husk of barley grain it is quite tightly attached to the kernel or seed of barley then what is the structure of barley grain this is a diagrammatic representation of barley grain in next slide we are going to see a colorful image of barley grain so here uh, the caryopsis of barley it is shown uh, so it consists of four parts majorly pericarp then seed coat then germ and endosperm these four are major part of any cereal grain like in barley there are these in this figure you can see all parts are shown that is husk is shown that is pericarp then embryo then endosperm and seed coat also okay so majorly the uh, whatever the aluron layer of barley they are of blue color whereas in other it is a blue so grains of barley varieties appear green because of they have blue aluron layers that are seen through a yellow husk unusual form not grown commercially may be red blue or black so endosperm cells are packed with the starch embedded in the protein matrix barley starch has both tenicular granules and also small spherical granules also as you can see in figure generally embryo part it is about 2 to 5% on dry weight basis then husk or whatever pericarp it is of 7 to 15% then testa contributes 1 to 3% of barley and then uh, starchy endosperm it is about 75% so all of you know that uh, cereal grains contains more than 60 or 65% carbohydrates these carbohydrates are nothing but they are present in embryo or oh sorry uh, endosperm of grain now we'll see what is the composition of barley so the nutritional composition of barley grain on dry weight basis it is enlisted here the carbohydrate content it is about 69.6% then protein it is about 11.5% fat it is 1 to 3% crude fiber 3.9% and moisture content is about 12.5% so this is a approximate 
moisture uh, approximate composition of barley grain on dry weight basis generally proteins are available about 11.5 percent that is nothing but a greater amount is available in the grains so there are uh, they are consist of albumin globulin prolamine and glutenin these type of proteins are available in barley grain uh, barley protein is lacking in essential amino acid called as lysine so that its biological value is low as compared to that of wheat then uh, lipid the total lipid content or fat content it is about 1.3 percent so being natural lipid they are concentrated in embryo and the aluron layer next the major portion that is carbohydrate the grain consists contains significant amount of soluble sugar but most abundant carbohydrates are polysaccharides which is plum grains are maybe starch starch 58 to 65 percent then beta glucan 3 to 6 percent then pentose on 7 to 11 percent with minor amount of others the amylase content of barley starches are often 25 to 30 percent and 70 to 75 percent amylopectin barley with waxy starches are 100 percent amylopectin coming to the minerals there are about uh, 2 to 3 percent ashes present among these uh, minerals the iron is present in high proportion regarding vitamins there are about high quality of vitamin that is called as niacin it is available majorly in barley okay so this is a small information about nutritional composition of barley grain so we will go through milling of barley grains how the process is carried out so here the sequence of operation in barley milling is given as follows the first there is a preliminary cleaning is there after that conditioning or tempering is there then bleaching that is to remove the blue aluron layer of barley then blocking or shelling of barley then aspiration is carried out then size grading by shifting then growth cutting and then purling of blocked barley or large barley growths grading and shifting and polishing is done next barley is milled to make the following products so the barley is often milled to obtain barley products for human consumption barley products are as follows these are blocked barley per barley then barley grits barley flakes barley flour so we will see what are the basic processes for these barley products the first one that is a blocked barley and pearl barley the basic difference between blocked barley and pearl barley nothing but in blocked barley there is a removal of superficial layers of barley grains the part of husk is removed during blocking whereas the husk and aluron layer is removed in purling okay so in blocked barley only husk is removed and in purling there is a removal of husk along with the aluron layer so two types of machine are used for the blocking and purling the first type consists of cylindrical mind stone which resolves about 450 rpm and the second time is second type is purling machine consisting of rapidly resolve, revolving 6 to 8 abrasive disc coated with carborandum or emery the hull and aluron layer of barley are removed by rubbing against milestone or emery disc the dehusk barley is then purl after the third purling bran is almost completely separated with the part of aluron layer at this stage the product may be graded and sold as a pot or blocked barley after the grain is subjected to the five to six purling the resulting pearl barley is small and round shape and it is of white color pearl barley is common ingredient in soup next product that is a barley grits the blocked grain is cut into small portion known as grits which are graded by their size and rounded in purling machine and 
polished the next product that is a barley floor sorry it's barley flex so when the blocked or pearl barley is reduced to flour in roller millers whole barley can be milled into flour flour is also by product of cutting purling and polishing process barley flour is used in baby foods breakfast cereals and for making leavened and unleavened breads okay this is a product called as barley flour next there is a barley flex barley flakes are made from barley or pearl barley by steam conditioning and then hot rolling is carried out so firstly they are steam and they are hot rolled the product are used in soups or in breakfast cereals so these are products of barley which are generally made from barley grains and available in market next process that is a our next slide shows that how they are prepared this is the flow diagram of barley products in that the barley flour barley malt and barley flakes how they are manufactured it is a given next that is a malting of barley so the major portion of our topic that is a malting of barley how the barley malt is prepared so here the simple list of process are enlisted here so the first process that is grain selection so next process that is preparation and storage of grains after that steeping then germination of grains and kilning and dressing process is carried out generally malting In the malting it is a controlled germination process so we'll see one by one how the malt of barley is prepared the first process that is a grain selection so in this in this slide you can see the picture of grains so for the preparation of ma barley malt so directly grains are used means they are not dehulled so the grains having husk they are directly used for the preparation of malt so the grains selected should be of an acceptable variety or mixture of variety it should not contain any infested grains insect damaged grain weed seeds or grains of other cereals dirt or any other un unacceptable levels of fungicide herbicide insecticide or any other plant growth regulators the grain should be appear bright and not stained because of microbes the grain should have even appearance and not be a mixture of different grades it should have no off flavor when they are chewed when cut the exposed grain endosperm should appear mealy it should not be sticky or vitreous it should have a particular nitrogen content suitable for the malt being made for many pale ale and large malts total nitrogen content of 1.5% or 9.5% protein are preferred whereas for highly enzymatic malt total nitrogen value might be 2.2% otherwise 13.8% protein so these are some of the condition for the grain selection then what is preparation and storage of grain so for the storage the well ventilated area should be selected the moisture content of the area it is about 15% moisture or 12% moisture or less the less for cool storage so preferably about 10% moisture content is uh, is selected because from the hum that humid condition the grain should not absorb more water or more moisture in them so for extended storage period the cool storage Uh, are generally recommended during storage grain can attain full germination power during storage all kind of contamination infestation deterioration should be avoided and heating should not occur the germinability of dormant grain improves and its water sensitivity declines during initial stage of storage immediately after harvest 
This post harvest maturation or ripening may be accelerated by the period of warm storage that is about 1 to 3 week for 30 to 40 degree celsius. This allows secondary ripening process to occur and also it kills the dormancy of grains. So when we are going to use these grains for germination they easily germinate. So these are some of the condition for storage of grains. Next process just steeping in water so in this pictures of uh, grains you can see how they are steep in water so the weight amount of clean and selected stored barley grains they are steep in water the grain may be washed by the concurrent of water before it is loaded into steeps which are already partly filled with water the time required for steeping depends upon the temperature and the extent of aeration to the steep water Usually, the temperature of steep water is controlled at about 16 degrees Celsius and the steeping is done for 50 to 70 hours. Compressed air is frequently blown into the base of the steep during or soon after loading the grains into water to help the mixture of grain with water and clean the grains. So here they are shown in small quantity but in industrial level they are steeped in large quantity into the water so at the intervals usually twice in a day or uh, in steeping period the water is drained from the grain and during the several hour air rest when the grain is not covered with water air is sucked down through the grains so this process removes the carbon dioxide and supplies oxygen and cools the grain and ensures that it respires so this process accelerates the rate and uniformity of subsequent germination. After each air rest, the grain is covered with fresh water and is periodically aerated. So during the steeping, the water dissolves material from the grain and becomes yellow and frothy and develops a characteristic smell. Steeping is continued until the grain is reached a selective moisture content. Approximately 45 moisture content is mandatory for final stage or for next stage of process. So the next process is germination of grains. When grains attain the moisture content about 45%, the steep is then drained off and the grain is transferred into separate germination vessel where it remains for 4 to 6 days. Grain can be spread on floor for 7 to 8 days for germination. The grain bed is leveled when the steep grain is put into germination vessel. The bed depth before germination may be 1.5 to sorry 1.4 to 1.5 meter. The depth of grain beds increases upon germination. By the end of germination period about 18% of starch is degraded and the grain will be richer in soluble sugars and amino acids due to activation of proteolytic and amylolytic enzymes. There will be loss of about 10% dry matter relative to the original barley because of soluble material lost in steeped water about 0.5 to 1.5% as well as they lost carbon dioxide and water due to respiration. Next process that is killing of grains. After germination, the grain malt is transferred from germination process to the kilning until the enzymatic activity is arrested. The grain malt is partly cooked too. Cleaning is the expensive process because it uses much fuel to the generate heat used to evaporate water from the grain. The hot air is generally fanned to you in the cleans. The final moisture content of malt is in the range of 2% to 5% of fresh wet. Okay, so as you can see in picture, the first we are using deaerator and second they are dried in. Uh, microwave oven 
then next process is dressing of grains after kilning malt is cooled and dressed that is rootlets are broken up as you can see in picture the rootlets are broken and they are separated from the grain generally rootlets and dust from the grains are used for the animal feed the dried and dressed product is called as malt it is a stored in airtight container okay this is all about the process of malting of barley so from fresh barley how can we manufacture barley malt so next the uses of barley malt it is used majorly in manufacture of beer and whiskies then also it is used for making vinegar next the barley flour is used in various drinks or various food stuff for example breakfast cereals infant foods then bakery products malted milk concentrate and various sweets so this is all about the process of or processing of barley thank you